One question I wanted to ask you, and I thought you did a great job when I listened to the interview of uh, Coffee with Comrades, is this this dance that they do where they're the victim. They're they're through multiculturalism, they're the victim, but yet at the same time, it's this genetics that makes them superior. Mm-hmm. So how do they balance that to get to get people to tap into that kind of dance and that message that they're giving? Oh, Jews. I mean, Jews are the the uh, the answer to their unfinished equation. Nothing makes it, it, uh, Andrew Anglin and um, Greg Johnson, who runs Countercurrents Publishing. It's a big white nationalist kind of more like intellectual um, publishing house. They'll say it. This makes no sense. Nothing we're saying makes any sense without. Jews. Jews are the answer to that question. Um, and so what they're basically saying is that as history goes on, it's the battle between nations and peoples. That's just normal parts of you know species fight, other species for hegemony and survival. And white people, as superior as they are, always won. That was until Jews get in there with their tribal interests and their very high verbal IQs, and they're able to use the genetic gifts that whites had against themselves. So whites have a high trust society, they'll often say. This is something Stefan Molyneux even talks about. Uh, this is part of the kind of intellectual pseudoscience, that they're able to you know, create these societies where they trust people, where they're able to uh, therefore create you know, advancements in science and things like that, except Jews will turn that against them, trick them, and therefore they'll use it against them. And they do that with multiculturalism, liberalism, feminism, Freudian psychology. I mean, honestly, over the eras, it changes somewhat. But no matter what the question is, the answer is Jews tricked white people. Which is why, going back to Dave Rubin's YouTube video, that he said the smart, smartest ethnicity was Jewish people, and that in particularly in verbal IQ. Yeah, I mean, and that's, I mean, the, the, the bell curve says the same thing. Ashkenazi Jews are the smartest. Yeah. Well, wh- what is the response then to someone who says that? Because I... I I'm not saying that I agree with that, but what I'm kind of asking, I guess, is if you have a test, an IQ test, or whatever, whatever metrics they're using, and they may be completely valid scientific measurements. I could be wrong on saying that, but I don't know. I'm just saying, like, if there is a va- if there is a say scientific measurement that shows that certain groups of people test higher on certain, say, uh, you know, uh, there's certain acuity, like they're they're better at certain things, like like verbally, they're better, like you're just desc- describing mm-hmm. the, the Jews, right? And, of course, that could be twisted in so many ways. So, again, I guess I'm asking is, like, what would be the, the scient- a real scientist, I guess, that isn't trying to cherry-pick the data? What would they say is the reason for these discrepancies, the differences between certain groups of people? It's a huge range. I, 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 do, I should limit the amount I get into it versus, like, what? a geneticist or a psychiatrist would would likely answer on some of those things. But there's a a number of them. The first thing is that IQ is not a really great measurement of natural intelligence. There is some validity in in measuring the naturalness of people's ability to, to recognize patterns, to solve abstract problems and things like that. But IQ can be generally affected by education levels, um, by access to nutrition, by a huge, huge, huge number of factors. Um, There's, really dramatic cultural differences in how people solve the problems and things that are presented by IQ tests. And so IQ tests, I know that what what, uh, kind of racists like to do is try and say that there's nonverbal IQ tests that show the same results. It's not true. Um, and the reality is that people with a, a you know substantial graduate education, for example, score really high on IQ tests um, and scored low on them before that education. Uh, people that don't speak English tend to score much lower on those IQ tests, um, even when they're translated. There's a lot of things that kind of go into what the IQ test measures. When we're talking about the IQ tests that people generally ascribe to Ashkenazi Jews, um, they're talking about studies of testing basically Jewish graduate students with super high IQs and then looking at psychometric data from Africa from people that don't speak English and were just introduced with IQ tests quite often and then trying to compare those results, it just doesn't actually make sense. And also, I think what's, what's really important too when we're looking at 
what they say about IQ tests is how they explain these discrepancies. And so, for example, uh, J. Philippe Rushding, who was a really kind of big proponent of race and IQ, offers this idea that white people, because of cold climate, evolved to be much smarter problem solvers versus people in Africa, which totally kind of, if anyone's compared what Sweden is like, um, you know, geographically to central or sub-Saharan Africa, not exactly like one is just the hard place to live and the other one's just super easy. It really doesn't uh, put into calculation about how IQ is formed. I mean, how intelligence would be formed cognitively, um, how people solve problems. Uh, and it really, really undervalues any kind of form of social science and how it would actually explain how people develop culturally. So I, I think when we're looking at something like an IQ test, what is it really measuring? And how do we understand those kind of complexes today? It's very dramatically different. Yeah, it just seems like the IQ test is the only thing they're basing this on, right? I mean, is is there other other like metrics that they're basing it on, or is it? I mean, just even the IQ? more pseudoscientific things like criminality. For example, if you look back in the period of eugenics, there was this idea that criminality was like a character flaw that could be explained genetically. Mm. Now we understand what criminality has to do with social conditions, what society spec of expect of individuals, what their socioeconomic background is, what people do to survive, how they understand themselves, their identities, all kinds of things. And so when they look at those sorts of things, what they want to do is say that a certain type of personality comes from a certain region. Therefore, we can generalize pretty you know, matter-of-factly. But the reality is that's not the case. There is no uh, temperance or IQ that can be ascribed to any group of people. There is no scientific evidence of that. There is some minor scientific evidence about, you know, families and, and maybe they score on, on a certain kind of rating. Even that's really highly adjustable based on their education and their environmental factors on how they were raised and things like that. But no, there really isn't some any substantial information otherwise. And a lot of the tests and studies that, for example, were cited by the bell curve and are cited quite often were funded by, not, by essentially white nationalist um, funds like the Pioneer Fund was formed in the 30s basically to fund race science education. And so uh, we're talking about in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, studies like, for example, twin studies, which are supposed to compare the high heritability of IQ, was funded by the, this basically Nazi, Nazi research tank. And then that was uncritically used by a lot of people like, uh, like Charles Murray and the bell curve. And we're talking about Basically, studies are highly debunked. They are not used in any academic paper by professors who speak at American Renaissance. So when, we're, when we look at like what we think we know about IQ and how it affects societies, we're talking about really highly compromised research that's not generally accepted by anyone. I know we were talking about you know some of the theories that they have on brain size and particularly IQ, but what about DNA? I mean, I know that there was recently in the news, there's James Watson, who, what he discovered, the structure of DNA, who's come out and said about intelligent levels, intelligence levels with race and with white people compared to African people. Have they gone into as far as in depth and on, have they used that, his rhetoric to justify their beliefs? And also, have they talked about DNA as a, as a way? So, I mean, they, they use James Watson a lot as the image of the embattled professor, He's just trying to speak truth, guys, and apparently that's illegal these days. Um, that's essentially how they treat James Watson. James Watson is a brilliant man, you know, in terms of sequencing the human genome and looking at the, the structure of DNA. There's no question of it. And it takes someone that smart to say something so fabulously stupid as what he said, which isn't based on any research he's ever done. It's his assumptions as a geneticist that so many things have to have a genetic root that he takes essentially a racial bias and gives it a deep thought explanation. And so, yeah, recently, you know, this happened in 2007 in an interview. He basically said that, that, Africa had gloomy prospects because of their low IQ, which he thought was genetic. And so then fast forward, PBS is doing a documentary about scientific masters, I think. So it's basically looking at his career and how he's always been kind of an asshole. That's kind of the story because it's not, this isn't the only time he said stuff like this. Um, and then when they ask him, do you still think that? He's like, yeah, I do still think that. I still think that it's genetic. I'm sorry. Um, and so, you know, he's had kind of even more of his titles stripped from him um, in the Research Institute where he did a lot of his genomic research. You know, that just fucks with, I think, a lot of people and how they view intelligence itself because mm -hmm. 
you have a person like him. He's a geneticist. He did groundbreaking scientific research with a couple other people, right? Won the Nobel Prize. Like, all this shit. All these credentials, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it also reminds me, I think I was talking to my friend the other day about this, uh, Ben Carson, who ran for uh, president the last election. Who is he, right. a neurosurgeon or something? The best in the country. Yeah. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. And, I mean, he is unparalleled in science. And, if I had brain surgery, yeah. I would want it to be Ben Carson. And that's what <laughs> fucks with me, because he still believes in this, like, biblical creation story thing, and he, like, says some of the most, like, sexist shit. It's and just, some of the most buffoonish things yeah. I've ever heard Pull about history. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, too. He's a big one on oh, that. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's so perplexing. I think it fucks with us. And this, to me, is why I think... We shouldn't be using IQ to indicate, obviously, the. Well, we shouldn't obviously equate it with morality. Uh, that's mm. definitely not the case. But especially, like, in certain kinds, I feel like intelligence is really a mosaic or a spectrum of things. It's not like, okay, you have a really high IQ. That means you understand all these different components of society and how societies are structured and what's best for, for a cult. You know what I mean? Like, there's. That's what I think fucks with people, and me too. I, I get a little caught up in this idea of, you know, if there's a test that proves someone's super intelligent, they're the best neurosurgeon in the country. Right. They must understand that the Bible is not the best place to look for the evolutionary history of mankind or humankind, right? Right. You know what I mean? Like it just it it, it gets weird. But I think it reminds us that just because someone is a fantastic neuroscience doesn't mean that they can teach me about Egyptian history. You know, yeah. Yeah. because Ben Carson, I mean, while he may be brilliant uh, when it comes to to you know his surgical techniques, I mean, is falling for some of the most bizarre and silly explanations by history. <laughs> 